Hello and welcome to TU100. I'm your tutor, Paul Carter. I've put together a video based on the face-to-face -face tutorial presentation that I made to our tutor group in Lincoln on Tuesday. I've left out some parts of the presentation that can only be done on the evening in person, such as the group work and the getting to know you exercises, but the rest is pretty much the same. Some of the presentation is in PowerPoint. I'm not going to read out every line in the presentation as I know you're able to read it for yourself, but if you need to take more time to read some slides than I've allowed, just pause the video and rewind it if you need to. If there's any part of the presentation that doesn't make sense to you, then do please email me. Remember, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Here are some of the topics that we'll be looking at in this video. Obviously introductions doesn't apply to this video, but we'll be covering all the other items. As your tutor, my role is to support you in your learning. Here's just some of the ways that you can contact me. And there's much more help available in the forums and discussion groups. You've got a tutor group forum. I'd like you to read that as often as you can. You've got a TU100 help forum. And other students are a great source of help and support. Your computer help desk, the number's there. You've got an online glossary, the DVDs are very helpful, and the study plan will keep you on track. So just how is the course taught? There are the books, obviously. Hopefully you've all received those. If you haven't, you do need to let me know as soon as possible. There's lots of reading to be done. Please get on with the reading as soon as you can. Also, get involved in the activities. As many as you possibly can. They aren't just an extra. They are part of the course, and you will learn a lot from doing them. The TU100 course website has lots of information. I'll be coming back to that later in the video. You have access to emails and the forums in there, the course timetable, the online units are in there too. There's also access to podcasts, videos, and that's where you'll be submitting your assignments. The Sense Board, the software development kit has been sent to you. Some of you may not have received it yet. Please again, let me know. The day schools and tutorials are a great way to supplement your learning. Do try and attend as many as you possibly can. You have the opportunity to record a learning log. That is handy as you go along to track your learning. It's also great for reflection and helping you to go back over material when you are revising, ready for the end of module assessment. We have Google Docs and your personal blog. Again, more information will be given to you as we go along. Now, I'm not going to read out all of this slide, but please do take note of the information that's contained here. So, vision for TU100. Here we are in the TU100 website. Now this is a tutor view, it's the view I get. Yours will be slightly different, but I want to take you straight away to one of the most useful links you'll find in here. If you look over on the right hand side, under study resources, when you click that link, you're taken to this page, lots of useful stuff on here, but the one I want to show you now is the module map. When you click on this, you get an interactive guide to the course and each item is clickable and it tells you exactly what you've got so the TU100 guide 
please do read that. I mean, read it really well, cover to cover, at least once, maybe twice. You'll find lots of useful help and guidance in there. What exactly have you got to help you with your studies? The pre-printed materials. Hopefully you'll recognise these. These are the books that you've received. There's a lot of reading to do. Please do read this. Don't just glance through it, skim through it. You do need to read things actively. And I'm sorry if that's pretty obvious to you, but I have had some students who felt that they could get through the course just by skimming and checking and looking but not actually reading the material and they came a cropper. If you want to pass the course you have to read the material. There are videos and other software that will help you to get to grip with things. Animations are really helpful ways of explaining concepts and ideas. Have fun with this. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Lovely bit of kit to play with we'll be going through some exercises involving this do get familiar with it have a look at the programming guide it will tell you more about the sense board and about sense itself this is the TU100 website this is my view as a tutor so yours will be slightly different but most of the main features are very similar there are a few things I need to bring to your attention here this is your gateway to a host of resources, instruction, activities and assessment support. I'm sure you're already aware that these plus signs reveal more links. Uh, another name for them is accordion menus. So you can click on any of these and within resources, study resources, assessment resources, library resources and so on. Also I want to uh, flag up the access to tutorials, online tutorials are accessed here. The one that you'll be using on Tuesday will be this one and other online tutorials for my group will be this one. And you can close that up at any time forums this is where you are going to access the tutor group forum and any other forums that are relevant to you the technical help forum is well worth looking into I know some of you already made use of this please do post your questions about technical aspects in here and the tutor group forum If you haven't seen these messages, please get onto this straight away. And I hope you are going to be actively involved in posting messages and reading messages as we go through the course. The website is also a great way to guide you in your learning in terms of planning ahead. So it's a week by week guide. You'll also be able to see any tutorials that are planned. and assignments that are due. We're in the five week planner at the moment. You can click on entire planner and then view everything that lies ahead in the course. You have access to all of the printed material online if you wish to read it that way but a lot of us like to have the printed material. What if you haven't received the materials? Well, don't worry, it's on its way. We've been told that you'll receive them very soon. 
there's been a high demand for the course, so there's lots of dispatches going out as we speak. So you can view online and download the material if you want to print it out yourself. The sense board is on its way too. If you haven't received yours, we know there's a bit of a backlog there, but it will be available to you before you actually need it for the course. Let's now have a look at the course in a bit more detail. So what are you going to get out of this course?
we do want you to consider using Chrome as your browser for this course because it integrates quite nicely with Google Apps. Planning your work. Very important to consider planning. Do check the course timetable. Look out for news updates and corrections. It's a 60 credit module which means approximately 14 to 16 hours a week for nine months. If you aren't prepared to commit that, you are going to struggle. You can work ahead, as I've said before, but watch out for the timings of assignments. Uh, remember that Block 4 is collaborative. Get yourself a routine. Try and get into the habit of studying at a particular time and always studying at that time. Find yourself a quiet area and setting aside the sort of time you need. Do you like to work in short bursts or do you prefer longer study sessions? Maybe a weekend's best for that. ETMA stands for Electronic Tutor Marked Assignment. Uh, there are five in total throughout the course. All the assignments contribute to your course result. TMA 01 and 02 are half length assignments. You have to achieve an average, a minimum average, for the five assignments of 40% over the course. So you could miss some out and still pass the course as long as your average stays up above 40%. The final assessment, the end of module assignment, the EMA, it's double weighted and it must be completed and you must gain 40%. So on top of the continuous assessment, there's the end of course assessment you must get 40% on the continuous assessment and you must get 40% on the end of module assessment assignment. Submissions, deadlines for each assignment. We can grant extensions. You do need to agree these in advance with your tutor. It's no good saying after you've missed a deadline, ah, oh, I needed more time. Please tell us in advance. There are no extensions available for the end of module assignment unless the uh, circumstances are very exceptional. ICMAs, Interactive Computer Marked Assignments. There are seven throughout the course. You need an average overall minimum score of 40% to be achieved on the first six ICMAs. Let's have a quick look at how you can find your way into the ICMAs. If you go into Resources, Assessment Resources, that's where you can see the TMA questions and in here the ICMA questions and guidance. So there's a bit of an explanation about how to use these, how to get the best out of them. Uh, there's the first one, when you click on it, I've only got the preview, you've got the actual questions. And this is what they look like. So you work your way through the questions, answering the ones that you're able to answer. If you're not sure of a question, go over the block, the part in the block that you think might help you with it. Uh, when you make an attempt, it will tell you if uh, it, you need to have another look at the work behind that. So let's have a look at this one. Which of the following quantities are discrete and not analog? like I'm not saying I've got all the right answers here I've deliberately got some wrong when you check your answer is partially correct block 1 part 2 describes the difference between analog and discrete quantities that's great because I'm told as a student where I go, need to go to put this one right and I can go back study the material again and then come and have another attempt and when you get to the last one you finish off and it gives you a grade but remember you can come back to them at any time the final ICMA must be submitted with a minimum pass mark of 40%. These scores do not contribute to the overall course grade, but you still have to pass them at 40%. And you can go over them. These are formative assignments. They're to help you reinforce your learning and to help you to get a, uh, an understanding, a full understanding of what you've studied. So you can go over them more than once. There's one ICMA covering each block. 
and aim to submit it after completing the block. Try and keep up with the questions as you go along so they haven't got to be completed all in one setting. You can study a bit of the course and then tackle an ICMA question associated with that part of the course. Good news, there's no final examination. So here's a summary of the assessment. I'll leave it on the screen for a short while. Remember you can always pause the video if you need longer. If you go over to the right hand side of the TU100 website you will see some links to illuminate. They have this little icon here with a light bulb. You may not see exactly the same wording or all three illuminate links on your site. The one that you will be clicking onto on Tuesday the 16th of October is this one. There's the opportunity to test your system but if you join the meeting you get another opportunity once you're inside Illuminate. It's essential that you have Java on your system. When you've accepted the download you should get a link to it like I've got here. When you click on it and accept the run you get a splash screen as Illuminate Live loads itself up onto your computer and then you'll be inside the Illuminate room in this case the Region 5 Day School room at the moment there's only one participant in there Billy No Mates, that's me as the moderator um, but as students arrive in the Illuminate room they're listed here and you can send messages to one another and to me by typing in here. You can click the send button or press enter. You can send messages to the whole room just to me or to any participant but the moderator will see all messages. You've got a few icons here such as raising a hand. If you want to ask a question, put your hand up. And if you are asked to vote, a tick will show favourable and the cross the opposite. Uh, you can have a smiley face, it kind of shows that you've understood. And you can lower your hand up that way and a frowny face to show you've not understood. Over on the right here you've got a window where notes can be made. Mostly that will be me typing things in but I will ask you to participate in certain things as well. So it's worth knowing the tools that you've got available to you. You've got a pen tool in all sorts of lovely colours and an eraser. That will erase all objects, all my objects. So if you're erasing your own objects, that's fine. If you're erasing all objects, remember you might be erasing other students' contributions. That tool, which is a highlighter tool, so it goes over the lines and text. You've got a plain text tool here. And a text box. And you can type in here. Uh, various shapes. If you're trying to draw an object, it's much easier to draw it using shapes rather than try and draw it freehand with a pen. So if your object's um, possible to make it in shapes, then I would advise you to use that. You've got a straight line tool. This tool is uh, quite useful. I can use it to highlight and point to where I'm asking you to look on the screen at any time. You can import images from on your own system and you can make use of the ready-made sprites that are built into the whiteboard tools and if you want to resize an object if you want a really big cup of coffee you can do holding shift will constrain the proportions if you don't hold shift you can make it all sorts of strange and weird and wonderful sizes. Uh, you can do a screen capture. I might use that sometimes when I'm trying to demonstrate uh, what I'm seeing on my screen and show it to all. Uh, you can group and arrange things. 
I will sometimes have ready-made slides that I can show you at any time. This is our next Illuminate session. And there will be times I'll ask you to contribute by typing something or adding something to a screen. So here I'm expecting you to draw your favourite piece of technology. You might want to practice that for the next session. Maybe you don't. OK, audio, very important. When you first come on to Illuminate, go to Tools and Audio, Audio Setup Wizard. This will take you through identifying what devices you have on your computer and enable you to set the volume for each of those. I hope you have got a headset microphone. Uh, that would be great and then you can contribute to the discussion. Otherwise it's me talking to myself and then you having to type rapidly. Down here uh, is the facility to turn your um, audio on and off. So if you want to speak you click on the audio button and please click off the audio button when you finish speaking. Uh, if you don't want to interrupt or want to um, pause things you can raise your hand by clicking on that button and I'll know that uh, you're ready to speak. Uh, if there are a lot of us in the room I will limit the number of um, speakers that can turn on the microphone at any one time just to avoid confusion and to avoid things slowing down. So if you haven't got facilities to talk, if you find you can't be heard, you may need to tell me that you need to speak and then switch on your microphone down here. You can set your microphone levels using these um, and the speaker levels using these sliders. Sometimes the uh, layout isn't ideal for your particular screen, so you can change the layout. You go into this one, you've got the default, wide and so on. And if you just want to have the whiteboard nice and large on your screen, and if you want to go back to the default layout, click here. I tend to prefer on my layout the wide layout. That seems to suit me best. Uh, well, I can see the chat of all the participants down the centre here and to see who's on and who's uh, got their hand up etc. Some of these buttons allow you to access tools rather than clicking on the menu so if you want to change the layout you've got that facility here. And some of the uh, tools I have here you haven't got. I think you might have the note window. That just brings up a little notepad where you can type in any notes that you want to make. And then you can save them and so on. And you've got facilities to save and print. When you uh, save a session, go to save and you might want to save the chat. You will be asked to debate and discuss things within a group or a subgroup and you will be asked to record your conversation so that's where you can save that and the participant list and here the whiteboard if you wanted to save anything that's been placed on the whiteboard by me or by fellow students uh, current screen group or current screen or selected screens but then when you come to actually pop it onto your uh, filing system you've got a choice here of whiteboard etc and I would recommend you choose the PDF version so that you can open it outside of Illuminate. So that pretty much concludes Illuminate. It's fairly straightforward if you need any help there is a help list here and you can click on any of these participant help would be the one that you tend to use. Keyboard shortcuts might be useful to you. So do have a play, do try things out, do get familiar with it and make sure that you are familiar with making sure that you've set up your uh, audio system. Well I think that's enough for our first tutorial. If you have any questions do email me or even better post a message on our tutor group forum. Bye for now.